This crew has set out to find an alien planet to colonize, but unbeknownst to them, they have actually arrived at Earth four billion years in the past. A deadly virus has infected all the plant life on Earth and destroyed forests and vegetation all over the world. As a result, the atmosphere is changing with oxygen levels dropping drastically. Additionally, the food grown from the plants infected by the virus is causing autoimmune diseases in humans. The best hope for humans in this doomsday scenario is an effort called Project Gemini, developed by Dr. Stephen Ross. The project is based on two unique extraterrestrial artifacts discovered by archaeologists. One of the artifacts is a unique-looking sphere, while the other is a warp engine, and archaeologists have discovered that both of these artifacts are four billion years old, meaning they came to Earth way before the planet ever had life. In a presentation, Stephen explains that the warp engine can be used to warp space and reach far-off solar systems easily. The function of the sphere is to create life and suitable environments for said life on planets. It's a terraforming machine. Stephen explains that it is this sphere that actually created life on planet Earth four billion years ago. He adds that they have no idea what extraterrestrial intelligence left the sphere here, but they do know that they can now repeat this process on another planet. He explains that humans have managed to recreate and use both of these devices. They have used the warp engine to send probes to other solar systems and found a planet that is perfect for terraforming and colonizing. Stephen introduces the team of scientists that will be going on the mission to terraform the other planet before the rest of humanity can move there. The team includes Peter Lehman, Leona Redwood, and David Kurtz. They will be joined on this mission by a military unit, headed by Major Ryan Connell. As Stephen and his crew are preparing to board their rocket ship, Stephen's girlfriend Amy rushes to stop him, but by the time she arrives, it's already too late, and the rocket has launched. As they prepare warp space and pass through it, Peter and David run a final check on the engine and the sphere. They speculate about the origins of these objects, and while they do, strange patterns and cracks form on the surface of the sphere. The crew all strap in and prepare to enter the wormhole that the engine will form. Every member holds an object dear to him or her, such as a teddy bear or a Bible. They commence warp drive and the ship enters the wormhole. But as it does, the computer on board reports a critical error and all the crew members pass out. The ship passes all the way through the wormhole and once the journey is complete, the crew members wake up and find themselves in front of a blue planet. After reading their star maps, they conclude that they have not arrived in their intended solar system and they have no idea where they are. Stephen loses his cool at Peter, who was responsible for putting in the coordinates and checking the engine before they commenced warp drive. Peter insists that he did check the engine, but Stephen is livid and tells Peter that he is relieved of his duties until further notice. Stephen says that by traveling to the wrong location in the universe, they have already failed the mission and doomed everyone back on Earth. Stephen sits in his room and looks at pictures of Amy as he reminisces a sweet moment he shared with her where he told her that the two of them are like quantum entangled particles connected across space and time. Steve also remembers a memory where he was working with the sphere and encountered an unexplainable being. The army personnel explains to Steve that while going through the wormhole, they went into an unknown fourth dimension, traveled a bit, and then came back to their three-dimensional space at an unknown spot in the universe. Unless they can figure out where they are, they cannot go back. Just then, the ship announces that an unidentified object is approaching. That object turns out to be the frozen body of Peter. Upon investigation, they find out that against Stephen's orders, Peter went to the engine airlock to check the engine. They assume that Peter figured out all this was his mistake and committed suicide out of guilt, but Leona argues that she knew Peter and he would not do that. Stephen scolds Leona for mourning over Peter when his mistake has possibly killed millions back on Earth. Stephen and David discuss David's dead daughter Rita, who is his motivation for being here, and just then, Stephen has the idea of considering the blue planet in front of them as a candidate for terraforming. Initial data reveals that the planet is fairly stable, and Steve says they should carry out their terraforming mission here. The others, especially Ryan, do not agree with this decision because they don't know enough about the planet. Still, Stephen pulls rank and enforces his order to land on the planet with the sphere and begin terraforming. Apart from Richard, 
one of the military personnel, the entire crew gets on board a lander and prepares to descend onto the planet's surface. Their descent is interrupted by a freak storm that forms out of nowhere, and they have no choice but to dump their fuel tanks to survive the entry. They crash onto the surface. Stephen reminisces another memory of him and Amy, where he gives Amy a bracelet made out of the material of the sphere as an apology for spending too much time in his work. The crew wakes up and takes stock of their situation. They realize they no longer have enough fuel to go back to the main ship in orbit. Stephen says they don't have to go back since they are here to terraform this planet and make it livable. His enthusiasm is clearly not shared by everyone. The crew prepares to take the sphere into a well-protected cave in the mountains and launch it. As they move the sphere, there is a strange sticky goo under the place where it was kept. Back on the main ship in orbit, Richard notices the same sticky goo on the walls of the engine airlock, and he also finds a portable camera lying there. Stephen launches the sphere in a cave in the mountains, and the entire crew returns to the lander. At the lander, Ryan arrives and declares that martial law is in effect. When Stephen demands to know why, he says he has found out some new information and refers to Richard. Richard shows the footage from the portable camera. In the footage, Peter is trying to prove that he did not make a mistake with the engine by recording his inspection. As he enters the engine to inspect it, he is attacked by some kind of crawling creature. Richard says the creature first appeared inside the sphere the moment they left Earth, and the security camera footage also shows the creature in the engine the moment they enter the wormhole, which means that it messed up their coordinates. They refer to the creature as the Trojan because it came inside the sphere just like soldiers came inside the Trojan horse. Leona tells Richard to be careful and watch out for the Trojan, but he says that the Trojan came down to the planet with them by hiding in the sphere. Just then, David reveals that the sphere is terraforming, but not according to how they programmed it to. Stephen says that they need to go and adjust the programming of the sphere, but Ryan says that Stephen no longer has the authority to give orders. All the scientists on board support Stephen, but Ryan asks Richard to pull up another security footage which is of Stephen encountering the unexplainable being back on Earth. Stephen did not tell anyone about this encounter. Ryan says that Steve has not been completely honest about what he knows of the sphere, and hence his decision-making privileges have been revoked. He says Stephen's secrecy cost the life of Peter. Stephen leaves. Against Ryan's orders, Stephen decides to go to the sphere and adjust its settings. He tries to convince David to join him, and when David refuses, he compels him by telling him that the entire Earth will die like his daughter Rita if they don't do something. Stephen and Ryan arrive at the sphere and find out that it is creating some kind of green life form. Stephen is about to adjust its setting when David notices that the Trojan is drawing near, and he says they have to go. Stephen refuses to leave and David fires a warning shot in the air. When that doesn't work, he fires one right at the sphere, and in response, Stephen pulls a gun on David. Just then, the Trojan arrives, and the two run back to the lander, barely making it back alive. Stephen warns David that if he threatens the mission again, Stephen will shoot him. Ryan arrives and punches Stephen for his disobedience. A warning goes off in the ship saying that the hull has been breached. Liana wakes up from the alarm and finds the sticky goo of the Trojan everywhere. She is assisted by a military personnel who gives up his own life to give her a chance to run away from the Trojan. Liana arrives in the central control room, and she and the rest figure out that the Trojan entered the ship from where the steel is the thinnest, which means that it is an intelligent being. They come up with a plan to lure the Trojan out of the lander by using Stephen as bait so they can bring it right in front of the lander's boosters and fry it. Liana is given the job to open the airlocks to allow the Trojan to come out and hide herself. At the last minute, the engines of the lander fail to fire, and Leona is forced to come out and keep the Trojan occupied, but when the engines do fire, she is the one in front of the boosters and she gets fried. The Trojan chases Stephen and David, and they close the door in its face at the last second and cut off a part of it. Stephen remembers a memory where Amy is trying to convince him not to go on the mission because she is pregnant, and also because she is close to developing a vaccine against the plant virus. Stephen refuses and says he has to go on this mission and save the world. Stephen runs tests on the part of the Trojan that is cut off while David nurses an injury from the Trojan. 
Stephen finds that the Trojan is a bio-robot created by the Sphere from the same material. He also learns that the bacteria in David's injury hold the key to the vaccine against the plant virus back on Earth. They have to get this information home. Stephen runs a test on the bio-robot, and it causes a strange electrical interference which explains that he was the unexplainable being he met earlier in the cave. Ryan arrives and tells Stephen he is under arrest. He says that all Steve cares about is being a savior of the world and he doesn't care how many people die for it. David agrees. Steve remembers a memory where Amy also says the same thing. Stephen asks Richard to adjust the star maps around them by tracking their movement across four billion years, and it reveals their solar system. Stephen realizes the fourth dimension they moved in was time, and not a spatial dimension. They are still on Earth, just four billion years ago. He deduces this because the piece of the sphere that flew off when David shot at it is the same piece he used to make Amy the bracelet he gave her. The sphere back on Earth and this one are actually the same. Meanwhile, David is strongly infected now. Stephen leaves Amy a message on the bracelet which will only be revealed if water falls on it. The message is the command of the sphere which will allow them to communicate across time. Ryan is about to set bombs in the cave where the sphere is to kill the Trojan, but Stephen convinces him that the better plan is to lure the Trojan into the lander and kill it here. Just then, an infected David arrives and starts shooting at them, saying if he kills them and destroys the sphere now, humanity would not be born and Rita would not have to suffer. Stephen shoots and injures him. He goes out and launches a flare to lure in the Trojan. With a bomb timer going down, Stephen fights both the Trojan and an insane David. The Trojan kills David, and Stephen manages to get out of the ship before the bombs explode and kill the Trojan. With a limited oxygen supply left, Stephen goes to the cave and hopes that Amy got his message and will contact him. Amy finds the bracelet lying in the rain and receives the message. She arrives in the cave and executes the command, and the two now stand face to face. Stephen gives her the details of the bacteria that she needs to create a vaccine and save planet Earth. Stephen apologizes for not coming back to her and tells her he loves her very much. The two share a passionate kiss across time and David falls and dies. In the present, Amy's vaccine works. Flowers and vegetation flourish once again. Amy pushes her and Stephen's baby in a stroller, who will now get to live a full and healthy life. The End Thank you for watching. Be sure to like our channel and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. Also, let us know what movie you would love us to recap for you.